So we're going to do part three of altcoins of 2021 that I feel are undervalued. Let's go. Let's Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. If you are new, please do subscribe, hit that bell button like and leave a comment. We're going to talk about Polkadot because I wasn't going to do this one today and then something kind of happened this morning which we're going to go on to why I rate it a lot and I like it a lot and yeah, really, really happy with it. This is one of my holds as well, sorry, I know, but we are going to go and delve a little bit deeper in the next few ones, the next two that I actually don't hold, I, I do like and I think will do well. Anyways, enough for the ribble rabble. As I say, in every video, please do follow me on socials because I'm ranting a little bit about Polkadot and ultimately the consequence of why I think Polkadot's good versus Ethereum at the minute, right? In terms of this, I'm going to go over it in a little bit of detail, not massive detail, so don't be the ones, oh, you didn't really explain it well. I've done other videos on Polkadot, I don't want to bore people, and ultimately this is more about the what's happened today, ultimately why I think it's undervalued, and most importantly, other little elements of why it can be a good source of value in terms of moving forward in growth over time with the ecosystem. So, Polkadot, hello. But first things first, before we go into it, this morning there was a pool announcement launch, whatever you want to call it, a starter, and I'm going to explain what this is, right? So, Polkastar is essentially a decentralized way to get capital for fundraising. So basically ICOs, right? Simple terms. However, the biggest, biggest, biggest flaw of this application, yes, it's creating environments for the Polkadot ecosystem. However, wait for it. This is actually a Ethereum-based token as it stands, right? So this in Q1 is going over to the Polkadot ecosystem. So this is majorly bullish. Now, these have literally sold out within 13 seconds, right? Whoosh, boom, gone, fucking gone, right? That was it, away. Now, as I say, problems are simple. The one thing that I need to talk about is ultimately what's happening in the future, this. This is still on the Ethereum network. This means high demand supply problems because there is going to be gas fees. And I want to show you a little thing in a minute. But what this essentially aims to do is to be the source of ecosystem growth and the backing section of like the launch pad on Binance, like the ICOs on the Ethereum network, which is going to be very, very good for the ecosystem of Polkadot. And we'll go into that in more detail in a minute. But ha, this is it. Within 30 seconds, bang. 10,000 plus people on the website, no issues, but the problem was the token demand with the Ethereum side of it. So as you can see here, over a thousand dollars, some of them were a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, up to one Ethereum as well as gas fees. Absolutely savage, and people are pissed. It's not pissed because poker starter is rubbish, as in the application of what they're planning to do. It's not that. It's the Ethereum network that bottled it and bottled it hard. The reason why it bottled it is because there was too much demand and not enough supply. Problem. So, moving on. I rate this massively because first level of information that I need to give you is it is a layer one solution in its own entity. It doesn't have any problems. It's like Zilliqa. It has built-in scalable models to allow it to work no matter what is thrown at it, which is why I rate this more than Ethereum. Sorry, don't burn me. But I hold a little bit of Ethereum. I hold a lot of dots because I fancy my chances overall in the long term. Now, it's not, in my opinion, it is not an Ethereum killer. It is going to probably compensate it a lot because it's in interoperability as in there. You can basically put this with multiple blockchains and it will work very nice. You're gonna start seeing a lot of tokens on the Ethereum network and also on the Polkadot network as well, which is gonna be very, very cool. So like I said before, I'm gonna go over it in a little bit of detail, not much, because I don't wanna bore you, right? Because there's a lot of information with this. So in terms of how it works, you have got relay chains, you've got parachains and you've got bridges. You've got multiple elements with that. You've got validators, you've got all kinds of, and honestly, right, when I say this in terms of how it works, this is a fully scalable ecosystem that will not have any issues long-term with ultimately adoption. Now, that word adoption there, that is why I rate this a lot, and I also rate Zilliqa. The reason being, 
I think in the next two to three years, we're gonna see a lot of adoption in the market. What we need, we need to be able to aid and amend any issues that we've had with Ethereum with better ecosystems that will allow things to work properly, i.e. no expensive gas fees, no delays, it just works, right? And this is what Polkadot will hopefully have. Now, in terms of the roadmap, there's still a lot of things to come, obviously videos there, but in terms of this, you can see here where we're going with it. The thing next is basically the core functionality, getting the relay chain sorted, getting the ecosystem up and running, i.e. those poker starters, i.e other blockchains going on and having parachains within and i'll explain why that is kind of an important thing in a minute but fundamentals are key it will solve a big problem in the whole world of the ecosystem who it's made by ex co-founder of ethereum big thing ultimately they have got a lot of information from that and built this as over time it has launched on its own little net which is absolutely massive so in terms of the token itself, obviously governance, which is hugely important. You can stake it, you can stake it right now, and bonding. Now, this is where the parachains are huge. Now, a parachain is basically a, essentially, a way to get onto the network, right? It's, uh, onto the ecosystem. And what you do with that bonding element is, if, say, for example, like the Chainlink is a great example of this, they have a parachain, they have a substrate, essentially, right? So you can access Chainlink on their platform their blockchain their polka dot and for them to do that they have to buy and hold a load of polka dot tokens which is called the bonding stage you've got to hold it to have a part of it which is why as this ecosystem grows with new developments new coins and also that interoperability i.e i'm an ethereum token but i'd like to be on the block uh, blockchain or polka dot as well cool go for it you know you can have that it's much better use case for multiple blockchains and most importantly the whole world of blockchain it makes it a lot easier so that's why i think that they'll both compensate each other very very well as i say though it is not an erc20 because it is an a native you know block, polka dot blockchain um you know you can't really do that whereas with the likes of poker star it is an erc20 token it is on the ethereum network which is kind of a problem but that will change in the next coming months now moving on to obviously what I mentioned just briefly, a little bit of a substrate. People can build on this blockchain, right? They can build it and that will allow them to have their own little blockchain identified, as in their own little substrate. They can build on it using the Polkadot ecosystem, which would obviously increase what usage, uh, fundraising, overall use case. You know, it's, it's a big, big thing. And I don't want to go too deep because there's so much information on the Polkadot ecosystem. It's ridiculous. But ultimately, it's going to be designed for full integration on their system. But this will allow them to obviously, you know, do the bonding stage, allow them to build their own identifiable blockchain on this ecosystem without worrying too much about it. And, you know, fully compatible. And if it is compatible with Polkadot, it can be pretty much compatible with anything, which is huge. So as you can see here, 129 teams are already built on the Substrate platform, which is essentially the Polkadot. Now, if I go through this, you're gonna notice a few big elements. Band is one, obviously, you can see there. What else we've got? We've got Chainlink, uh, Celia, um, Chainsafe's another one. We've got loads, Deep Brain, Chain, DIA. A lot of oracles are built on this for scale as well. So you can see here, there's already a lot, like already a lot, Kusama, which is their test net, by the way, if you check that one out, pretty cool. Ledger, obviously, there's loads, right? And this is just a start. This is literally just a start. These are all, you know, the ability to actually work with this is absolutely massive as a starting point, as a start. This is a baby, baby starting point. So this is why I think it's undervalued. I think there's gonna be so many more built on it. There's gonna be so much more in terms of use case, volume, utility, and the most important thing, scale, moving forward as scale. So we're going to the chat, we'll have a little look at it. As I say throughout this video, I don't wanna to go too deep with this because there's so many videos that I've done before in much more detail in terms of how it works versus what this is. This is more the findings of why I think it's undervalued more than anything because you've seen here today, ultimately a problem with the demand in the, in the blockchain of Ethereum. Now you've got to imagine gas prices will always increase. Overall though, when you're looking at the price, it's, in my opinion, I still think it's a good price. I do think it's gonna come lower. As you can see here throughout this phrase, we have got a downtrend. 
you know we've got high we've got low low high low low hmm. resistance level right huge big resistance level got to get through it but for me when i think value proposition i think you know, you got to think, yeah, the supply is totally different compared to Ethereum, but I do think it's majorly undervalued. I bought Ethereum at $14 back in 2017, early 2017, right? It was my first exposure to an altcoin. I sold it very, very prematurely, about $300. I made money, obviously. But I do think that when you look at price predictions of this versus Ethereum, I think this, because it's got the scale built into it, because it's got a load of interest already, as you can see by today, things are selling out within you know 30 seconds. It's crazy. Making the gas prices go tremendously high in Ethereum, I think this will take off because a lot of people will want to build on something that is a layer one solution. Ethereum is two years away, literally two years away. They've got to use a another layer. They've got to use someone else to do their scaling. Hard work. That is hard work. And Ultimately, this is why I'm bullish on the likes of Zilliqa, on the likes of Polkadot. The interoperability side of it is huge. The scalability side is huge. To build on this, it's flawless because even if you got an Ethereum-based token, you could build on this anyways and just have another layer. Great. Works. And that will ultimately be bearish for Ethereum, technically, even though it's still building on it because people can use this side of it and not have any bottlenecks, any issues. So let's look at in terms of investment side of it. I personally think that levels between $4.50, which is a 618, which is where it tapped a few times recently. We've been in resistance for a while. It's been support twice. Is a great place to be. In my opinion, anything below $5 isn't a bad place to be. It's been a lot higher, obviously, in terms of the past, but it hasn't realized growth yet. When the likes of all these tokens go onto the, the blockchain, it's going to be hugely important to understand how the bonding works. Then you've got the token utility, the stake inside of it you know, that's huge. And governance, massive, massively important for an ecosystem. It's pretty much ready to go. So the next few years will be very, very key in my opinion. Now, I like this, obviously you can tell, but there's one thing I need to show you as well. I mentioned it before, Kusama. Now, the reason why I'm saying keep an eye on this because the growth in this is a test net. It is basically Polkadot test net. Projects are tested on this ecosystem in the exact same way as Polkadot, i.e. they've got a bonding stage. They build on it as a substrate, they test it to make sure it works, right? When you then look and think to yourself, well, let's move it around a little bit. When it goes onto the Polkadot ecosystem, they've got to do the same thing. They've got to then bond the tokens there. It's going to create demand for the token. Now, this is always going to have use case because it's always going to have testing elements, but you can see the rise in it. The growth has been monumental in terms of overall just everything. It's been hugely important, and we've not seen this growth yet in Polkadot because the systems have not gone live on Polkadot. Next year, I think Polkadot will have a parabolic move like this. Obviously, supplies are different, but they're still the same situation. Now, another thing I want to talk about just before we finish I think this has got a much more catchier branding with a pink, with the name, Polka Dot, with the pricing as well, because when you look at the overall picture, you see here, you look down, you look, well, actually it's $25. People will look at that and go, wow, that's pretty cool. Now, if you're looking at future predictions, look at Ethereum, 66 billion, nearly 67 billion in market cap, right? Polka Dot, 4.5, right? Huge huge difference and i think they will be a massive gap bridging because of the interoperability with ethereum you know a very very logical step is people will like ethereum tokens because they're, they're already there they've been established but if that ethereum token then starts to to go on to a polka dot i.e stays on ethereum and just goes on the polka dot bridge as well that's huge because the token flow is going to improve. If people want to pay less fees and if people want to get a faster solution and a problem to a transaction, well, they're going to use the Polkadot side of it. That is why I think we're going to compensate each other, but I also think it will easily bridge that gap. Wouldn't shock me in the slightest to see this as 60 billion market cap. It really wouldn't. It honestly wouldn't, which would give it a very, very nice rise. I personally think that this is undervalued, even though people always say in the comments, I think it's overvalued because it's ranked nine. Well, you got to think the projects aren't built on it yet. There's very, very limited projects on there yet. Wait, wait until they are. It's going to be pretty crazy, I think, and it's going to be huge. And we're already seeing today a massive pump. You know, probably the reason why it's pumping is probably because of that 
that poker starter. Simple. So there you go. Got a long way to go, in my opinion. I would be very much shocked if this is not double or at least triple the price by the end of 2021. But I think it could be a lot more. I do feel that that 60 billion token uh, dollar value, uh, dollar market cap essentially will be pretty much. I think it'll be met easily. I think it'll be easily met, in my opinion.